Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, An Intergalactic Obliteration of the Cosmic Fine-Tuning Argument. In this video, we're going to be looking at the problem of the priors for the confirmation fine-tuning argument. So the confirmation fine-tuning argument, if you don't know, is a kind of softer version of the cosmic fine-tuning argument that we checked out in the last video. If you're unfamiliar with that argument or the cosmic fine-tuning argument in general, you should check those out now. So the confirmation fine-tuning argument relies on something known as the prime principle of confirmation, which we stated in the previous video as this. Given two hypotheses, H and H2, and one observation, O, is if O is more likely, given that H, then O confirms H. Now there's a number of objections we're going to look at. Objection number 27 in this long-running series is, as with Bayesian epistemology, there's a problem of circularity here. Imagine that we are comparing instead two different confirmation hypotheses, the prime principle of confirmation and some other hypothesis. How can we state that the prime principle of confirmation is more likely to be true if some observation O is more likely given that the prime principle is the case, when to even make such a comparison, we are already assuming that the prime principle is the case. It seems to be quite concerning any possible way that we could justify things like the prime principle of confirmation without just saying, well, it feels good, it seems like something we like, so we'll keep it around. We don't have any method of confirming those principles because those are the very principles of confirmation that we're looking to. 28. Furthermore, it seems that this implies some strange conclusions. Take the following example. Imagine that you have two hypotheses. 1. Seiku wins the lottery because God designed it so that he would win. 2. Seiku wins the lottery based on random chance. Now imagine that you observe that Seiku, in fact, does win the lottery. This is much more likely under 1 than 2. In fact, it's certain under 1 and extremely unlikely under 2. And yet, according to the prime principle of confirmation, Seiku winning provides support for the first conclusion. And our first hypothesis is actually confirmed by Seiku winning the lottery. And yet, we could make this argument about any time someone wins the lottery, or anyone getting struck by lightning, for example. And yet, it doesn't seem that just because something has a really high unlikelihood that it's more likely that God caused that. Because people win the lottery every day, and one could imagine a world in which God did not exist, where people won the lottery, and God was in no way confirmed by those statements. So this seems to be a really worrying consequence of the prime principle of confirmation, and seems to be pretty good reason for us not to use it at all. Additionally, there seems to be a big question of degree, and this is kind of a problem we were poking at a little bit in the last example. If, in fact, the argument does exceed, to what degree is the hypothesis confirmed? Unlike with Bayesian epistemology, there's not a specific rule for the degree to which we should change our degrees of belief. The prime principle of confirmation does not explain how much one hypothesis is confirmed against another. If this argument only provided maybe a small or infinitesimal amount of confirmation, then the atheist might acknowledge that even if successful, the degree of confirmation is too small to convince anyone of the conclusion that God exists. The point is, until we give some amount of degree to the prime principle of confirmation, there's no reason for us to believe that the hypothesis God exists is confirmed in any kind of way that would actually make us change our point of view on the subject. This kind of points to the intuition that exists in the last example of saying that one of the reasons, perhaps, that we're not convinced is because, sure, the god wanting Seiku to win the lottery is confirmed to a small degree, but it's so small that it doesn't really matter and it's not going to make us change our minds. Number 30, also, unlike Bayesian epistemology, we do not look at all of the high possible hypotheses when claiming that some hypothesis is confirmed. Imagine that I want to build confirmation for a specific hypothesis, H. 
If I compare it to a wide variety of other, much stranger, less probable hypotheses, H1, 2, 3, and so on, I can build apparent confirmation for a particular hypothesis without acknowledging some stronger hypothesis Hn that might be more likely or might be better confirmed, either because I want to make H seem more likely or perhaps because H1 has not yet been discovered, rather Hn has not yet been discovered. The point is, this seems to be a great way of building apparent confirmation for hypotheses by just comparing them to a bunch of other hypotheses without acknowledging that there are an infinite number of possible hypotheses out there, and we surely haven't discovered them all and don't have an exhaustive list. The problem of the priors. Now, so just as with Bayesian epistemology, there's a question as to what the original probabilities are and how they are determined. For example, if we take the observation that we exist as certain, as a fatalist might do, under either hypothesis, then the case for confirmation disappears completely. If it is certain that we exist and there's not a chance that we don't exist, then it seems that there's absolutely no reason for our existence to be more likely under one hypothesis than the other. You can take this either as saying, well, clearly we do exist, so there's no point in kind of going back in time and thinking what would be more likely, or you can take this as the fatalist conception of there is no other way for the universe to be. And as we've noted before, the cosmic fine-tuning argument is no problem to the fatalist. Now, in terms of Bayesian confirmation and Bayesian epistemology, as we noted in the previous video, the prime principle of confirmation can only be equally confirmed as Bayesian epistemology if H2 is equal to not H, which, as we see with such things as the multiverse objection, this is clearly not the case. And, as we noted before, there's a lot of ways that we could formulate this hypothesis. There's a huge number of other hypotheses out there that are not H2. So it seems very difficult to realistically compare not H and some particular H. So it doesn't really seem to hold up to the higher standards of Bayesian epistemology and Bayesian confirmation theory. And furthermore, any attempt to actually use Bayesian epistemology to back up this argument must confront the multitude of problems which are in fact faced by Bayesian epistemology and the Bayesian, which are enumerated in my series on the subject. I'm not going to get into them here because I've already done way too much on Bayesian epistemology. So, that was the... Problem of the priors for fine-tuning. Next up is Ed's perfect design, which is something of an objection to any of the cosmic fine-tuning arguments, as well as a number of other arguments for the existence of God. And finally, we're going to talk about why cosmology is not science. Watch this video and more here at cardades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.